U.S. Treasury and South Africa's National Treasury have committed to form the U.S.S.A. Task Force to combat the illicit financing of wildlife trafficking. This was announced by U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen whilst visiting a game farm near Pretoria earlier today. This is the first of Yellen's many appointments on her three-day tour of South Africa. She's also outlined a number of key goals of the joint operation. Uh, just a warning, we apologize uh, for the poor sound quality in this clip. The U.S. Treasury and South Africa's National Treasury are committing to form a United States, South, a United States South Africa task force on combating the financing of wildlife trafficking, which will work to address the critical issues in three key areas. First, we'll increase information sharing between our financial intelligence units to better support key law enforcement agencies from South Africa and the United States. Second, the task force will prioritize the sharing of financial red flags and indicators related to wildlife trafficking cases, especially those involving the U.S. financial system and those overlapping with investigations into high-level corruption, drug trafficking, and transnational criminal organizations. Finally, U.S. Treasury and our counterparts at the National Treasury will work to strengthen controls in our countries and beyond to combat money laundering and terrorist financing through public-private partnership activities in the region. So that's U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen uh, in South Africa. And joining us via Zoom is Professor John Stremelo, who's an honorary professor of international relations at Wits University. Uh, Prof, always good to talk to you. A whole Janet Yellen, Treasury Secretary in South Africa. Yes, great things to discuss and talk about. But one gets a sense when heavy hitters like her are coming to South Africa, there's a big agenda on, the, on there, hey? There is a big agenda, Peter, and it's a very practical agenda. I hadn't realized that poaching was, uh, was one of the items uh, on the agenda, but I sure as heck know that the eight and a half billion dollar uh, sustainability fund that the uh, U.S. and its Western European friends have uh, put together to test uh, whether or not South Africa can go go green at a time of, uh, of, of ESCOM crisis here in this country is another sign of, of willingness to work with South Africa, as Biden conveyed to Cyril Ramaphosa when they met in December, or when, when Anthony Blinken was here, the Secretary of State. So even though there is strains in the relationship over Ukraine, they still can do business on a multiple fronts that is symptomatic of the web of relations between the Americans and the South Africans. The things that she's going to discuss, I mean, and, and junior officials or more junior officials could have come. What is President Biden saying to South Africa by sending senior officials? It was not that long ago we had his foreign secretary in the country. Yes, that's correct. And uh, he's trying to draw a very sharp line of difference between he and, and the Trump administration, which alienated Africa, which was racist in its approach to American politics. And it's very much in Africa's interest that the Democrats prevail and stay in power, uh, even though you're not supposed to be following the internal affairs of another sovereign state. Indeed, the American democracy is very open and very contested and very polarized right now, as you know well. So the poaching story, I think that's pretty self-evident, very, very important uh, to manage uh, and the flow of these, uh, these funds. But there are other issues that she's going to be talking about, just transition, energy and uh, trade between the two countries. Uh, how important are these conversations for America, because for us, for sure, we need them. Well, they are important, uh, uh, Peter. Uh, there are asymmetries. After all, the U.S. is a big economy, and South Africa is large for Africa, but 
uh, hardly comparable. And yet, uh, the African um, exporters are granted under the African Growth and Opportunity Act privileged access to American markets without tariffs. And it, it, it's really incumbent. I can't I can't stress this enough. Joe Biden is president because uh, the people of South Carolina, the African-Americans, voted for his primary win there, and that set him in motion. And he relies on uh, on, on African-Americans and recent immigrants who have been naturalized Americans and vote in America uh, as a very key constituency. And that's good for African-U.S. relations. And Janet Yellen in Dakar on Friday when she gave her address ticked off all the practical areas of economic development and trade and, and climate change where America has has uh, seen it's in, it is in its interests to uh, to partner with Africa for, for domestic political reasons as well as foreign policy reasons. All right, so um, there's so many things uh, uh, playing out, I, I get a sense, you know, um, and I just wonder if it's, it's, it's maybe coincidental, but we have Russia's uh, foreign affairs minister in the country, um, Russia, China, South Africa doing naval uh, exercises together. Uh, is this a real scramble for South Africa and the continent's attention by America, sending these uh, 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 big people to us? I don't think, uh, uh, I, I'm glad that America is doing this, but I don't think it's necessary. Um, the, the web of relations between mm -hmm. Africa and America, and don't forget uh, America's, uh, what, what Martin Luther King called its congenital birth defect of, in, of slavery, uh, binds uh, America to Africa in a way that very few other countries in the world uh, uh, have been. And America is also uh, re re recanting the period when uh, it had an alliance uh, as a white uh, uh, country with the white minority government in South Africa. That, that changed drastically in the 1990s, and I think for the better. But, uh, you know, memories are long. But also the future is is challenging, and uh, uh, Africa is is a dynamic region that's going to be far more important to the global uh, scene in the in the 21st century than it was in the 20th. It's it's um, it's 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 a sign, I think, of seriousness at least on the part of the Democrats. Uh, the Republicans, I can't speak for, and it, it is a very partisan uh, debate within the United States, and race is at the bottom of a lot of the of the debate that's going on. And America has never come to terms with that, but it's coming to terms being being uh, uh, forced to by its it's becoming a, a, a non white dominant country because of the immigration. Mm -hmm. Just transition, uh, moving to cleaner fuels. Our language is becoming a little bit more um, clear that look we're in with coal for the long haul uh, the west is saying come on move quicker and in between all of this is this what 85 billion million that's been promised uh, to south africa but a lot of it is coming in terms of loans rather than grants could this be an opportunity to say to america we want to do this but you have to help us by giving us more financial support rather than more debt. Yes, of course. And, and uh, uh, you know, I just recall, I, I, I don't know the details mm. of, of the arrangement for the $8.5 billion package. And I know that it, 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 you, you use the term 80, 80 mm. billion. That's what it would take to transition properly over the long term, apparently. Uh, but uh, it is a step in the right direction. And as I was going to segue uh, by, by analogy, uh, what America did for, for and what, what a Republican administration did, uh, George W. Bush, for uh, HIV AIDS and the PEPFAR, uh, the largest single grant that uh, AID made a couple of years ago was to the uh, half a billion dollars to the, to the PEPFAR program here in South Africa. So, you know, it's a complicated picture but it, it does reflect the web of relations that are educational, scientific, 
uh, economic, cultural that exists between the two countries and uh, between Africa and the United States. Uh, they've had their downturns, but they've had their upturns. Uh, and, and I don't think it's, it's, a, it's a Cold War issue uh, as it was with Russia, with China now. I don't, don't buy that at all. And, uh, and there is a competition, of course, but that's to the betterment of Africa. And uh, uh, the, the, the Russians are, play, play a minuscule role. I mean, it's, it's uh, 30 times more uh, trade with the U.S. than, than with, with Russia. So, um, you know, I, I, I just I, I think this is good for its own sake. And uh, there are going to be issues, but it ought to be a win win uh, for both sides. But there ought to be asymmetries. And there are in the uh, in the in the duty free importation, which is going to be up for review in in 2024. So 2023, 2024. Uh, so so therefore, um, you know, the more lobbying that goes on, the better. Uh, and they've killed off the the uh, malign act activities of, of Russia in an act that the House passed. That's not going to pass the Senate or the, be signed by the president. So I'm, I'm fairly optimistic. It is a strain, the Ukraine war, but, uh, you know, this, this too will pass. Professor John Stremlo, always good talking to you. Thank you so much indeed for joining us tonight. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. All right, that's uh, Professor John Stremlo, honorary professor at the International Relations uh, Department, Wits University, talking to us about Janet Yellen's uh, visit to South Africa. She is the Treasury Secretary at this time. I and mean, we were talking about the 8.5 billion US dollars. I think I said 85. I wish.